Do you have enough calcium and magnesium in the soil for your plants? Do you want to know how to get more calcium and magnesium? If so, stick around. Calcium and magnesium are macronutrients that plants need, and together we call them CalMag. They're essential for plant growth, but we usually don't worry about them because most soil has enough of both nutrients, and we just don't have to worry about it. It can be a big concern though for house plants or plants that are grown in potting media like peat moss or core. Part of the problem here is the chemical characteristics of these things, particularly calcium. It likes to combine with other nutrients and it precipitates. That means that it makes a solid and it comes out a solution and once that happens plants can't get to it. So you can have soil with lots of calcium in it but the plants are starving for calcium. We need to have this calcium and the magnesium water soluble so plants can use it. It needs to be in the ion form. A good example of this problem are eggshells. They contain quite a bit of calcium and some magnesium, but if you put those in your garden or in a compost pile, they just don't decompose, even though a lot of people think they do. They break up easily, but they don't dissolve in the water. They are not plant available. They'll remain in the soil for hundreds of years. Now there's another term floating around called water-soluble calcium. This term is promoted a lot by natural Korean farming. Uh, it just simply refers to the calcium that's been turned into ions and is in solution so plants can get to it. There's nothing magical about water-soluble calcium. So how much calcium magnesium do plants really need? Turns out they like to grow in areas where they're getting 100 ppm calcium and about 40 ppm magnesium. That ratio is perfect for them. These nutrients can come from the soil, from the water that you're using to water your plants, or from the fertilizer that you're adding. It doesn't really matter where it comes from as long as the plants get the right amount. Now many soils in North America have enough calcium and magnesium and we don't really have to worry about it, particularly if the pH is either neutral or above seven, so it's alkaline. As the soil gets acidic, calcium tends to precipitate out and you can have a calcium or a magnesium problem in acidic soil. The problem is even worse in house plants, particularly if you're watering with soft tap water, rain water, which is also soft, or RO water. These three sources have very little calcium and magnesium, and you have to put that back in. In my case, my tap water has lots of calcium and magnesium, and so I never have to worry about it unless I start using a lot of rain water for my house plants. Let's first have a look at magnesium. Magnesium is fairly easy to add to soil. If the soil is acidic, using dolomitic lime will not only improve the pH, but also add magnesium at the same time. Soil that is not acidic and is deficient in magnesium can be amended with Epsom salts, which is 10% magnesium and 14% sulfur. A 40 parts per million solution of magnesium is made using 1.5 grams of Epsom salts per gallon or one third teaspoon per gallon. As a reference, one teaspoon equals five grams of Epsom salts. Compare that to popular online recommendations for adding magnesium, which is two tablespoons, six teaspoons of Epsom salts per gallon. That is 20 times more than you need. What a waste of material. Not to mention that high levels of magnesium can create an imbalance with other nutrients. How do you use eggshells to make calcium? Eggshells contain mostly calcium carbonate, and it dissolves easily in vinegar, which is also known as acetic acid. The result is calcium acetate in water. Calcium acetate is a soluble form of calcium. The acetate is an organic molecule that is easily decomposed by microbes, leaving the calcium free for plants. This is sound chemistry and can be used to provide calcium for plants. If you also add Epsom salts, you create a CalMag mixture. Some sites call this fermented eggshells, but there is no fermentation taking place. The problem with many DIY recipes is that the authors don't understand the chemistry and make false statements about the recipes. Let's have a look at some of these. You should use brown rice vinegar. 
Brown rice vinegar has some added color and flavor when compared to regular vinegar, but it is still acetic acid. There is no reason to use a special kind of vinegar. Use a 1 to 1,000 dilution for plants. If the original amounts of eggshells and or vinegar are not specified, you have no idea what the final concentration of calcium is, and therefore you don't know the correct dilution ratio. This is a problem with many DIY recipes, not just CalMag. The only way to know the contents of a final concoction is to control the input ingredients. I found dilution ratios ranging from 1 to 20, all the way up to 1 to 1,000. One video even said it doesn't need to be diluted. Roast the shells in an oven to prepare them. Many recipes include this step and claim it will remove any organic substances that will rot and contaminate the calcium solution, or dry the shells so they absorb vinegar better, or burn off the inner membrane. The inner skin is not decomposed with the vinegar and remains behind with the undissolved shells, so it is not a problem. The vinegar is mostly water, and drying the shells so you can put them in a water solution of acetic acid doesn't make any sense. Even with baking, the final solution is not sterile, but it also has very few nutrients in it that can sustain microbes. I see no benefit in baking the shells. The amount of shells and or vinegar is not mentioned. DIY recipes that do this are just flying blind. If you follow them, you have no idea what is in the final mixture. If you use too much vinegar compared to the amount of shells, the resulting solution will still be acidic and may harm your plants. What is the right way to make homemade calcium? Even though many of the DIY recipes for making a calcium supplement for plants are poorly designed, the method does work if it's done correctly by following this recipe. Use any amount of vinegar you like, and then add the eggshells. Wait 48 hours for the reaction to be complete. It is done when it stops making bubbles. You can also taste the liquid. You won't taste much vinegar at the end of the reaction. By using an excess of eggshells, you ensure that all the vinegar is used up and that the solution is no longer acidic. At the end, you should have undigested eggshells left over. If they are all gone, you did not use enough. Add more and wait another 48 hours. Grinding the eggshells will speed up the reaction, but it is not necessary. Some recipes dilute the vinegar before adding it to the eggshells, but there is no point in doing that because vinegar is mostly water already. When the reaction is done, separate the liquid from the remaining shells. This is your concentrated calcium solution. It is important to know the final concentration of the calcium so that you know how much to dilute it before using it on plants. Vinegar is about 5% acetic acid, which will produce a final solution that is 1.6% calcium. Plants need about 100 parts per million calcium. To make such a fertilizer solution, add 23 milliliters or about one and a half tablespoons to a gallon of water. How do you make a CalMag solution? A CalMag solution provides both calcium and magnesium to plants. To make such a solution, start with the diluted calcium mixture and add one third teaspoon Epsom salts per gallon. Can you make calcium for plants without vinegar? Some sites suggest that you can simply steep the eggshells in water and make a strong calcium solution for plants. I reviewed this in my book, Garden Myths Book 1, as myth number 49. An eggshell contains about 2,000 milligrams of calcium, and boiling it in water releases about 0.2% of this, forming a very dilute solution, which is essentially useless. Does a calcium foliar spray work? Many sites recommend using the above DIY calcium spray as a foliar spray and usually mention that it will cure blossom end rot, BER, in tomatoes. 
BER is a watering issue that results in lower than ideal levels of calcium in the fruit. Calcium is a non-mobile nutrient in plants. Leaves will absorb it from a foliar spray, but it stays in the leaves. It is not transported to the fruit, and the fruit will absorb very little calcium from the spray. The bottom line is that a calcium foliar spray will not cure BER and adds little value to plants. Now, should gardeners make their own CalMag? Is this a DIY solution they should follow? If you follow my advice on other topics, I'm not a big fan of DIY solutions, but this is one case where it actually works quite well. Eggshells are free, vinegar is really inexpensive, and even Epsom salts is inexpensive compared to fertilizer. So if you have an issue, go ahead and make CalMac. Now, personally, I find it easier just to buy fertilizer with it already included, but there's nothing wrong with the DIY solution in this case. It works very well. Just be sure that you actually have a problem before you try to solve the problem by making this stuff. If you have hard tap water, you probably don't need it. Most garden soil doesn't need it. But if you're using soft water on house plants, you do need to add. Now, calcium and magnesium are not very toxic to plants. So if you add a little bit too much, it's probably not going to harm them. But it's still not a good idea. If you'd like to learn some more fertilizer myths, have a look at this video here. And if you use a fertilizer that's a 10-10-10, you better watch this video here because that is almost never the right fertilizer to use.